they say, wait a minute. Uh, However, uh, if someone like Jesus himself says, the only true God, now here there is no, what do you say, ambiguity. Yes, we both know that there is only one God. Do we agree? Yeah. Yes. Therefore, God, your God, your God, anointed. Yes. Yeah. So, whose God is that now? Whose God is that? <laughs> Jesus is God. No, no. This is the third party, the audience to, to your God. Oh, so now you're changing it to the third party. Before, so can you read them both together? Maybe it'll make more sense. Read it together without stopping. Your throne, O God, forever and ever, in the center of your kingdom, you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you. Yeah, so that's the Jesus. Exactly, yes. my yeah. point. Yes. You see now? So, yes. so Jesus has a God, based on that. Yes. So you cannot say that Jesus is called God and that's it. You know why? I don't know why the... So we need, wait, to, wait, wait. Understand. We need to understand in what sense does, does the Father refer to Jesus saying that the Father is Jesus' God. By the way, sense. Jesus wasn't the only person that the Father referred to as God. Do you know in Psalms 82, 6? Yes? The Jewish elders, they are called, you are gods, yes. the sons of the yes. Most High. Yes. Now, who's calling whom God there? They're, they're not gods and true gods, no. No, no, why, why, you, why would you use double standards? When no, Jesus is called, wait a minute, when Jesus is God, because called God, you want to accept it as no, no, no. If God. If the Father is calling his son God, exactly. he's not calling him a false God. No, no, in the, false... wait a minute, in Psalms 82, 6, it never says false God. No, no, no. It says God but, but, and the sons of the Most High. But, but, Same but, way, but, like, wait a minute. When we look at... Wait, 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 wait. First, you need to understand what Psalms 82, 6. Just like Jesus is called the Son of God and God, yes, in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, the Jews are called God and sons of God. Yes. You see what I mean? So this is the... Right, right. Wait, wait, wait. You, need, you really need to let me finish. This is the terminology used by the Jewish people in order to show reverence to certain people and to show the, that they are amongst the righteous. You know, Jesus confirmed Psalm 82.6, you know where? When Jesus said, my father and I are one. You know, many people use that, sub, uh, that uh, text as proof of Jesus being God. Do you know what Jesus says a few verses after that? He actually quotes or refers to Psalms 82.6 and says, ye were called gods. Yes? And all I'm saying is I'm the, I'm the son of God. No, no, wait a minute. You need to understand that just because somebody is called God in the Old Testament or the New Testament doesn't make them Almighty God. However, however, wait, wait, shake, wait a minute. However, if someone like Jesus himself says the only true God, now here there is no, what do you say, ambiguity. Yes, we both know that there is only one God. Do we agree? Yes. Now, if there is only one God and Jesus is confirming that one God, in fact, he doesn't use the word. He uses the term only to make it even more exclusive that the only God is the Father, then you do not have any other proof to refute that. Because Jesus, look, Jesus, I think, I I think Jesus' testimony should be taken as yeah, the highest yeah, precedence yeah, for you, yeah, someone. Yeah, that word, that word context. Really? Okay, put it in context so in John 17, 3. No, no, wait. In order to find the yeah, context, yeah, you have to use John 17, 3 and the adjoining verses. You do not go to another chapter or another book. Oh. What do you mean? Why not? Because if you're talking about the context, the context has to be in that passage. Not necessarily. Why would they have It's not mutually exclusive. Okay, I'll tell you what. That's an, that is an incorrect analogy of the Right, right. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you're telling me that the context is not in the adjoining passages, then the then the meaning with it, then the meaning of John 17 3 means completely different to what Jesus said. No, 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 not at all. So let me So what does it mean then? You haven't actually confirmed yet. With Jesus. Yeah. The the situation he was in was when he was referring to those that were be believers but had gone astray and were believing in false gods. So Sorry, point, which which passage you're talking about now? John 17 3. It's, it's talking about someone going astray? That, that, that those are going astray from Where, where does it say that in there? That? That's what I'm saying. No, no, you don't know the context. Come on. You, yes. Where does it say someone went astray in there? You have to go back and read. Yeah. Read verse don't 1. Go on. Go on. Read don't verse 1. the book of John didn't have chapters and verses. It's one big storyline. So when you read through the whole of John, yes. and you get to understand it, at that time there were many uh, people that were believing in false gods. And the reference was there to say that this is the way you believe. The Father is the only one true God. Not the false gods that you were uh, believing in. I agree. I agree so with that you. that was the context. Okay. Now, 
So wait, wait, wait. If they, if let me finish, let me finish. Yeah, go on. So then thereafter, the way you get the full context is when you look at how Christ himself is referenced. When you talk about his glory, which is the same as the glory at the very beginning, when you look at... At the beginning of what? At the very beginning of time. Before the no, it didn't say time. You're making up before things. That's the problem. No, no, no it didn't say. It says... No, it didn't say creation either. Whatever.